Okay, well, Manson, that is James. Yes, that's a good Manson place to start, is. really, isn't it? <laughs> my, uh, your tat is in my mind, so I think it was. <laughs> uh, Aye, the, 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 the connecting link, the, the, the link that connects the both of us and really how we first met each other was through Hugh McDermott and mm -hmm. the fact that both of us at different times stayed in his old house at Bruins Bank down near Bigger. I was okay. there in the, for a couple of years in the, in the mid-90s and then you followed on as the next writer in residence there. And it was really yeah. a plate of mince and toys that you cooked for me one time that we started to dream up the idea of a Scots language publishing who's for Burns. And the hell, the hell reason we started this is because both you and I were going to schools in Clydesdale and meeting Burns, who were broad Scots speakers, incredibly talented people who had nowhere to go with their Scots. And whenever, whenever I looked in the bookshops and saw what was available or in the staff bases at schools, there was can it was obvious there was a, a gap in the market and a huge chasm in education provision. And I think between the two of us we we saw we, we thought we wanted to do something about it. And that's where that all came from. Uh, that's that's how I mind it as well. And and uh, it wasn't just that there was a market, there was this crying need, as you said, in educational terms, because there were that many uh young folk bringing Scots their own language to the language of their home to school, but once they got into the classroom, there was nowhere for them to actually read, write or speak it. And uh, right. we really wanted to try and change that. Especially because we were, especially because we were biding in um, Hugh McDermott's house and sleeping in his bed, not at the same time. Not the same time. I mean, uh, we used to do tours for schools and I mean, the wee laddie came in and I was talking about Sue McDermott's cottage, and this is where he, this is where he, you know, this is where he um, spent his time. And the wee boy said, um, "Does he know mind you stay in here?" <laughs> <laughs> and that fun, and that enjoyment, and that sense of that sense of humour that Brett Burns bring to to school and to the reading. It's what it's what they want to read. And the books that were available were they were all right, they were worthy, but they were black and white. They were. Um, they were uh, kind of hem knit it, and what we wanted to do was find a way. Anyway, we had no idea when we had our plate of mince and tatties how we were going to do it, but um, we kept to do something. And uh, we, there we also forward. weren't that many of the of the books as well. There were just a few of them, and then, as you yeah. say, the teachers often had to resort to old photocopied sheets of paper of quite old, often quite sentimental wee poems that they would get them out to recite um, around right. Burns Night every year. Right. Um, and it was, it was, it was teachers, teachers finding their way in a, in, a, in a landscape that had no good books. And like all teachers, they, they um, improvise and they'll find, they'll find a way to do it. But one of the, I mean, there's a poem I love. I absolutely love The Sayer Finger. The Sayer Finger is a brilliant poem. But it's only the fact that it was done to death for about ever since it was published to, to when we started thinking about doing this. And I think the, the teacher weren't they scunnered with it, folk just kept, it seemed to be a habit. And it was the settled will that this was how it was going to be for Scots. And also that if a child spoke it, when I was when I was at school, I got thumped for speaking Scots. And when I was at Browns Bank in the 1990s and going around and sort of trying things out with schools, the Burns weren't getting thumped, thank, thank goodness. But there was a kind of settled will that this was slang and this was something that they shouldn't be doing apart from one time of the year. That's when they brought out the photocopied sheets or the, the wee books that didn't they engage the kids and that's what it is. So we, we took it forward for their gym, didn't we? We went and did, uh, had, a, had a go at it, a right good go at it. What was, what was our first book? What were our, what our first books were, our first we did, books we were two, two, we two. A Scots Alphabet um, uh, book and yes. then we did uh, I, I wrote a wee book about the, the, the history of the Scots Parliament, if you mind, and um, and yeah. then um, we, we rapidly moved on to wanted to try to fill that space that we thought that was existed there. You know that that time of the year, the one time of the year when Scots was really kind of allowed into the classroom at that time was around yeah. Burns Night, and we thought rather than Burns just having to go back again and again to the Sayer Finger great poem though it is, <laughs> um, yeah. we should really try to create a whole new uh, slew of poems that they could dip in and out of uh, contemporary wonder, have, have you got any there, James? Well, <laughs> the very first book, 
the very first book we did was this one, which is called uh, King in the Middle. I've got, uh, I can't get in there. I've got my horn tail, it's snap. <laughs> Monkey Megan rhymes in Scots. And, and if you mind what we did there. Can, we... can I mention, Jim, can I mention um, at the front of that book, there's a wee Shetland, oh God, a Shetland cuddy on wheels. Aye. This is a Brent Hodgson poem. And this was a, an oblique reference to Willie Souter, the Perth poet. We said that if this is this is one of our this is our mission statement, I suppose, that if Scots is to come back alive, or he said Doric, if the Doric or Scots is to come back alive, it'll come back on a uh, come back on a, a cock horse. And um it meant through Ben's literature and through Ben's poems. And uh, I mean I love this, love this book. I like I love other books we've done, but this in, in particular has Gregor Steele's name might come up again. The, um Gregor Steele was a teacher at the time when we started doing this at Bigger High School, and he's moved on to other things. Fantastic writer. Um, this is a this poem has apologies to Cliff Richard. Um, <laughs> and it's called Bacon Roll. I'm just going to get a. Before, I'm assuming folk have had their dinners, and this <laughs> might. Be, I, I think I, Greg have told me when they read this once that a laddie ran out of the, ro the room and boked. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what a way to start, eh? I'll give you a shot. Bacon roll. Got myself a greasy, squeezy, triple cheesy bacon roll. Gone to gang doing nice and easy. It's a greasy bacon roll. Got a hungry moo and that is who I'm going to fill the hole with my greasy, squeezy, triple cheesy bacon roll. Take a look at the breed. It's bro. <laughs> bacon roll here. <laughs> it's got pickles and red sauce and all. I'm going to hate it now. We iron brew and a snowball for my tea. Oh, I had myself a boofing, hanging, honking, minging, bacon. Can never tain a bacon roll. We an aching wham. I'm going home for I just can't kind of thaw another moothy with a hanging, minging, bacon roll. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies Very to Abdi. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I think um, my, my memory is what we did was we, we approached about 20 or maybe even 50 um, poets, markers that we can and said, here's the arena. We want Bairns, yeah. we want poems for Bairns that are going to make them laugh, that are going to be ones that they can learn quite easily, but also ones that I are a wee bit sort of, a wee bit clatty and minky and minking and so on. And, and, and yeah. that... That was the arena, and they fulfilled it in spades and Gregor Steele as well as anybody else did. Um, <laughs> listen, for the, for the same book, Matthew, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read or, or, or recite, because I can it off by heart, I'm going to recite a poem that I wrote yeah. for that book called about a guy called Sergeant Snoddy. And the, the reason yeah. why I want to do that is because <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a story that I'll tell after this, which, was, which actually kind of... Is a, is a really great story about why we cite today at GQ in the first place. So this is Sergeant Snoddy, who is a very, very daft polis for Fife. Sergeant Snoddy, Faker Coddy, set off to visit Fife. He merged a hundred mile and mare on a jam piece for his wife. He didn't arrest till in Burness. Was this Fife? Tell me too, sir. <laughs> Upon my life, you can't for Fife. You're in the heel of the new, sir. Fay Fife, said Snoddy. No, no, Loddy. Oh, I tell you that, you fool. Fife's in the west, near Budapest, by the peat bogs of Kabul. It's up the Nile, a young Carlisle on the first of Raoul Pindy. It's a Roma's ken for Rome to again. I can smell it through the windy. Through the windy. <laughs> he a hundred mile in mare till he can't be done it heed. He took a sniff, <laughs> fell off the cliff, bounced twice, and sign was deed. They sent his body to Kirkcaldy by parcel post express. His wife said, that's the first time Pat's come home to this address. <laughs> These words were writ upon his grave. The tourists knew besiege it. Here lies Snoddy Faker Coddy, a total utter Egypt. <laughs> now, the, the story that I want to tell about that is, yeah. is that some years after that book came out, I was at a, a private party in somebody's house uh, around about Burns Night. I'm talking about maybe seven or eight years after that um, book came out. And there was a, 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 a wee lassie there that I was chatting away to. She was probably about eight year old. And she said, oh, we're learning, learning poems for, um, for Burns Night. 
And I said, that's great. She said, and I've led one off the heart. Would you like to hear it? And I said, I would love to hear it. What's it cried? And she says, it's cried Sergeant Snoddy. And so she then recited that poem, what word perfect, getting every all the intonations, getting all the humour into it and everything else. And at the end of it, I said to her, that was absolutely brilliant. Do you ken who wrote that poem? And she said, no. Nah. <laughs> and I said, I did. <laughs> so then we had a bit of a barney about the fact that I couldn't possibly have written it because it was in a book and so on. But finally, I convinced <laughs> her that, that, that I had written it. And yeah. to me, that was a beautiful example of what we were trying to do with HEQ because it didn't matter that she didn't ken who had written it or that I was... It, that didn't matter at all. What she had done was she found a poem that she really enjoyed. She had learned it off the heart. She was able to recite it to a total stranger at a party. Yeah. And that poem and all that Scots language and humour was going to be in her head for the rest of her days. And as far as I was concerned, that ticked the box and said, why did we start this in the first place? C correct, yeah. Correct. And it happened, it happened quite quickly as well. Um, I think Aye. there was an appetite, a hunger, and folk were really wanting to see books of this kind. Um, but one of my roles was, um, J James was a general editor, and uh, still is a general editor, and my role for about nine years was the Scots Language Development Officer, going around a thousand schools um, and training teachers. I did about 500 in-service sessions. I uh, went through about three cars and uh, <laughs> it was, uh, and I got to Ken all the different parts of Scotland. But I mean, some of the things that, some of the things that came out of this was um, my very first event, my very first visit to a scale was in Dundee. And, uh, and then me, and this wee lassie chased me down the corridor and said, it's not itchy coo, it's itchy cow. <laughs> so we're off, to, we're off to a good start. <laughs> and we 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 I try to introduce um, Scots words and the familiar Scots words, the Bairns adding some other words in as well as they can, try to fill in the gaps, but also trying to activate and revivify the words that they can already and give them permission to use them. And scalp clearly is a great Scots word, the ones the one the words that the Bairns that's kind of well known in the, the various um sessions that we did because that just got the kids absolutely absolutely um laughing. But um I mind, this isn't that long ago, but I mind a laddie um, getting a wee bit fankled and saying um, he wanted uh, Abdi in the room to Skype their bahookies. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. So, Ken, uh, now we could, uh, if some, folk, some folk would have picked him up for that, but that's not what the spirit of Thichik was about. Hearing fun with language, enjoying it, and giving the bairns permission and confidence to use it. And I remember um, a number of amazing comments from pupils, an astonishing laddie. Um, who said that he wanted to ken why there were so many Scots words in his German homework. It was amazing because he had completely worked it out himself. And, uh, but also sad stories where um, there was one laddie um, somewhere in Dumfries who told me his teachers, Werner, or Dumfries and Galloway, who weren't letting him use Scots in the classroom. He wanted to study Scots and they tell him he wasn't allowed to use slang in the classroom. Very, very sad. And, and, and head teachers of schools who quite happily were telling young lasses um, that they would never amount to anything. And it was really, really sad stuff that I came across and really the need to, for these books and for the, for the outreach. Also the lobbying of government that we did too. So kind of a big, really big project at various points, you know. So it was very important that we did, that we did it and are continuing to do it. There's a couple of things that you've said there that, that again, it's amazing, you know, we, we've been doing this now for 17, 18 years and uh, a, a lot longer really, but Itchy Coo's been on the go for that length of time. So you forget yeah. the stories, but you said something about the Bairns' uh, permission to use Scots in the classroom uh, with the Itchy yeah. books. But I mind a lot of teachers saying that to us as well. Teachers saying yeah. they've given us permission to bring Scots into the classroom. And that was a kind of odd thing for them to say but then you remember yeah. that they had been through the same system, they'd been educated in the way that they had, and they'd been told when they were Burns that you shouldn't speak like that in the classroom and that Scots was yeah. was kind of like a, on a lower kind of scale of of of, uh, of language than, than English yeah. was. And I yeah, think, we're trying, we're trying, to be honest, I think break that break. attitude has changed massively in recent years. Aye, yeah, absolutely. Of course, we, we, didn't, we, we didn't do this ourselves because uh, no, it, no. it was a muckle muckle project and uh, B and W Publishing, who are our publishing partners, have been astonishing from the very get go. 
And I think we're up to book number 70, something 70 like that. again, it's something like that. And, and we've also players. had brilliant illustrators like Karen Sullivan and, and Bob Dewar and so on as well, that, that you know, because we, we were yeah. absolutely determined that the quality, the, the production values of these books had to be as good as all the other books that you could get in bookshops. Otherwise, folk would always exactly. choose the, the English book over the Scots book if it wasn't the same kind of quality. And you're exactly. right, we have to, a big, it's a big thank you to our publishing colleagues, Black and White, for, for doing Black that. And, White. and they took all mm -hmm. that stuff on board. There's also as well, there was a Gavin Wallace, who was a very important part of what we did. He was at the Scottish Arts Council, latterly Creative Scotland, and um, sadly is no longer with us. And he's an astonishing individual who kept us going. We, I'm seeing folks, uh, folk flashing the, their names up on the screen here who are also part of this. Um, Susie Briggs' name was there just a few minutes ago, and Laura Green um, I mentioned that I seen one of us came to Jordan Hill I kind of, and spoke to them. Um, uh, teachers have been an awful, awful big support to us too. It's just uh, something, something that, that has been uh, quite amazing. Um, we, we've, we've got ourselves into a lot of translations over the years too. We started off doing original work, um, but the translations have seems to have, seems to have clicked an awful lot. And we've, we've got maybe got a wee bit of time, James, to just read a wee bit of some of the translating work that we've done. I don't know, I mean, kicking off if with that, if you don't mind. If for uh, this is. Um, this is, uh, Roald Roll Dahl has been um, uh, an astonishing, <laughs> Roald Dahl, can I get this to write? There we go, I've worked it. Roald Dahl's Reckon Rhymes is one of um, a number, a series of uh, of uh, Echiku's Roald Dahl titles. Um, Matilda by, uh, this one translated by Anne Donovan. James is, James is uh, Sleek at Mr. Todd and the um, my kind of find the Egypt's the same as Egypt's the around here somewhere. Anyway, um, lots of translations of Roald Dahl, and I'm just going to do a quick reading for the uh, Rick and Rhymes book. The Panto season, I'd imagine this year is going to be a bit more limited than it I was is. Um, Panto in Scotland is any of the great supporters of the Scots language, whether I'm not quite sure if they're interested in the Scots language, but they use Scots at the time. And anyway, this is a wee swatch for, um, for Cinderella, and I see Margaret uh, Cruikshank for, uh, um, for Mother Tongue's names appear in their taste. So anyway, uh, I hate to mention this quickly, Susie Briggs once accosted me um, at an event dressed as Mr. Egypt. So uh, this is for her. Cinderella. Nay, do you think you can this story? You dunny, the Raelians for mere gory. The phony one, the one you can, was cooked up old lang sign and then. May too soon, say may too soon, they soft and sappy, just to keep the bairnies happy. Mind ye, they got the first bit right, the bit wherein they did a nicht. The Hackett sisters, jewels and all, merged pronto to the palace ball. Well, there we darling Cinderella was doing the cellar, wheat and smelly, while rats half mad for things to eat, began to chow and bathe her feet. Help, she cried, they're all get eaten. A magic fairy heard her greeting. She come down in a blaze of licht, said, Hiya, hen, are you a recht? Time short, I'll start there. Anything you got yourself there, James? Uh, well, just as a complete contrast, here's a wee bit of prose that I'll read. Uh, about ten years ago, so about halfway through the, the Itchy Coup project as as as, 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 as so far uh, existed, I translated yeah. um, Winnie the Pooh into Scots. And that was a kind of odd one because... <laughs> Winnie the Pooh is such a quintessentially English book. I loved it when I was a bear, and I loved the stories in there. Um, and somebody had suggested, oh, why do, why, why do you not do Winnie the Pooh? So I, I tried it out, and the weird thing is when you when you do it, all yeah. of these characters that are quite kind of, um, uh, well, as I said, and no offence meant here at all, no offence, um, that are quite English, <laughs> they become kind of Scottish. And so here's a wee yeah. bit. This is the, a story where, uh, just a wee bit for here, where... Um, um, uh, Pooh, uh, uh, Tiger, Tiger, the, the new animal has arrived in the forest and he's hungry, so he's taken wait, by Pooh and Piglet, who's wee grumpy in this bit, um, to, 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 to meet the donkey that lives in the, in the forest to get some breakfast. Uh, and the donkey's name is Hee Haw. Pooh explained <laughs> to Hee Haw that Tiger was an awfully good friend of Christopher Robbins and had come to stay in the forest. And we grumpy explained to Tigger that he was he wasn't in mind what he haw said because he was I was crabbit. And he haw explained to we grumpy that far fair he was feeling fair jocose this morning, 
and Tigger explained to Onibri with her lugs on that he hadn't had any breakfast yet. Oh, I ken there was something, said Pooh. Tigger's I eat thristles. So that was how we came to see you, hee-haw. Oh, didn't he fash your head about it, Pooh? Oh, oh, hee-haw, I didn't mean that I didn't want to see you. Aye, aye, nae do. But your new strip it freen. Of course he'd want his breakfast. What did you say you cry him? Tigger. We'll stick this way, Tigger. Hee-haw led the way to the most thristle-looking burrach of thristles that I was and waved a hoof at it. A wee patch I was hodding back for my birthday, he said. But after all, what are birthdays? Here the day, I wore the morn. Help yourself, Tigger. Tigger thanked him and looked a wee bit no share at Pooh. Are these thristles, Richternyoch? He whispered. Aye, said Pooh. What Tigger's like maist? That's right, said Pooh. I see, said Tigger. Say so he took a muckle, a muckle moothby and he gave a muckle crunch. Ah, said Tigger. <laughs> Your friend, said he, oh, appears to have bitten on a bee. So, <laughs> Beautiful lots of that. scope for character is there. <laughs> and I loved it. I think, I think the other point you made, Matthew, earlier on, uh, when you mentioned Susie Briggs' name, is how many folk we've managed to, to we've met through this whole project, but also yeah. some of the great writers that we've actually managed to bring on board, uh, yeah. and Susie's one of them. Um, there's some other younger writers that we've brought in as well, especially into our latest I, book, the, the Hans Christian Hans Christian Anderson's book, yeah. I mean, in, in 2020, uh, this year we have uh, we have uh, we have uh, twenty we have uh, five books <laughs> twenty books five books coming out, uh, which is quite remarkable. And um, uh, Susie Briggs is in that book. Uh, Ashley Douglas and Thomas Clark, but we've been very honoured to he and and uh, to hear Sheena Blackhall in North East Mac and another and another, another, and another wonderful Doric writer. Um, but um, Elaine C Smith. A great supporter of our project, and um, Julia Donaldson's very, very been very kind to the day the forward, and she's been a supporter too through your translations, James of the of the, the Gruffalo. But um, a, a, a real surprise, a real newcomer, I think, to to Scots has been um, this um, this uh, this highly prolific writer in English, but um, Val McDermott. <laughs> <laughs> has yep. written one of the most amazing pieces of prose I've seen in Scots for a long time. She's done the Emperor's New Clays in the um, HQ book of Hans Christian Andersen's uh, fairy tales. And so, um, Ken, uh, there's, there's, this year, we, in spite of all the difficulties that have been faced by publishers and bookshops and writers um, and scales, we are, and, and the Bairns as well, being stuck at home and, and locked down and other things we have to deal with. Very, very important, I think, to keep Scots to the fore, and um, hopefully these books that uh, to mention as well. Um, there's uh, Thomas Clark's uh, Diary of Wimpy Wayne, Roderick the Raj, and his first one's book, up. Diary of yeah, like, Wimpy Wayne, <laughs> and your own um, Paddington um, right. book, which is uh, you can do it better now. Paddington <laughs> is um, there. Okay, <laughs> okay, it's worked. It's worked. It's all backwards. And um, it, oh been, the snowman, which is um, but by us is coming out um quite soon too. So, um, five books and Ken, we're still we're still going. We're still sitting. We're still, we're still breathing anyway. We're still we're still going. And um, I mean, one of the things that one of the uh, the rewards for me has been the fact that teachers have taken this on. And um, I mind a number of years ago, I think it was doing in gala and then doing in service, and a teacher had said that she in the past thought it was her duty to um, ensure the Bairns didn't speak what she called at that time slang. Mm -hmm. And um, she was very clear on that. When she started teaching, that was what she thought her job was. And But because of the, the availability of high quality books in Scots, and she mentioned quite a lot of the Chiku books, she said in front of a number of colleagues, she felt that it was now her job to teach Scots. And part of her remit and part of her professional uh, development to learn more about Scott. So that was that was an, a remarkable moment uh, for me when I heard that. And and so I mean I'm sure that there's um, folk listening who have who, uh, who that has a resonance with and um, that folk uh, have some sort of um, affinity. 
I, 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 that, that to me again is part of why we did this in the first place. You know, when, we, when, we, when you and I started talking about this, you know, twenty or near year ago, but also that thing about, you know, for so long Scots was excluded the the education of Scots speakers um, yeah. from their formal education, and one of the things that we were absolutely clear about was that that when Scots got into the classroom, it shouldn't in turn exclude folk that didn't hate Scots as their first tongue. Yeah. And so okay. one of the things that we've tried to do with, with, with the EDUQ list is to make sure that teachers and parents and pupils can all actually enjoy these books, whether their first tongue is Scots or no, because one of the mm -hmm. most important things to, to remember about Scots is that it is part of Scotland, it's part of Scottish culture, it's part of Scottish life. And if you, yeah. if you bide here, it's kind of essential that you can something about it because you're going to hear it going on all around about you, wherever, wherever you're from, whether you're, you're first talk or no. And so I think the inclusivity of this is really important. It's definitely up to who comes after us and um, the next generations to come. The laddie who was in a school not that long ago and he made the point, how are we meant to speak this language if nobody's ever taught us it before? <laughs> it's just amazing. <laughs> a 15 year old 14 year old laddie so maybe in the future well, i think definitely in the future um the books are available i'm, I'm, I'm kind of sad alistair uh, didn't make it in here because uh, if i move my head here the other way uh my dundee scarf is uh strategically positioned on the back, back bookshelf there and that was just to kind of give him a wee bit of support and maybe that's why he didn't maybe that's why he didn't make it on because <laughs> he took one look at that and went off but <laughs> Uh, I, can, I can see we're up to the half hour mark, and because we didn't have our um, ha our moderator on, or or, or, or any editing, or, or any um, a clue what we're doing here, <laughs> are we done? Right, are we done? Or are we uh, well, you can carry on. It's amazing. Well, I, we, we, we right. should probably talk about winding <laughs> up. There's some, let's let's think. There's, there's a wee thing I'll add on to what you've just said, Matthew, which is basically I yeah. I fundamentally believe, and I've believed this, you know, from way before Echiku came into existence, that if yeah. education is about anything, it's about enabling uh, young people to make the most of their lives long after they've left school, and it yeah. seems to me that if you're talking about education and language. One of the things that education should do is it should enable a young person to be as articulate as they possibly can be in mm -hmm. whatever language it is that they that they hear or that they're learning. So, and it doesn't matter whether it's Scots, English, Gaelic, Polish, French, Spanish, you name it. If yeah. if language has got any value at all, it's, it's as a means of communication and as a means of of being who you are, because language is so central to people's individual and communal identity and yeah. by getting scots into the classroom um that seems to me to be such a huge change in the way that scots uh used to be viewed and if we've had a wee part to play in, in making that change then that's a that's a, a good reason for having spent 20 years doing it thanks at um richie Koo is the sponsor of the scots skill of the year award um, that's coming up very, very soon. You can see it's in the border of our, our screen here. And uh, I've got to say a massive um, uh, thank you to Simon Toomey for, for making that happen. And the, the skills that are being awarded, there's also the Domineer or Teacher of the Year. The names that are there are ah, absolutely deserved. And you can see a real range of folk from across the country. Um, there's a couple of folk there who were named last year Tay. Um, they're that good. Uh, one of them is Jamie Fairbairn, um, working away at Banff, who's an astonishing individual. But there's folk everywhere. And again, without, without these folk, uh, and the, the Bairns themselves, uh, we've been doing this that long, James, that some of the Bairns that we worked with are new teachers themselves. <laughs> and have got Bairns <laughs> and, in the end. And, uh, and they're amazing at taking Scots for it and making sure that their pupils, that they, and even their own Bairns, um, use yes, Scots taste. So, um, uh, as I said, um, Ken, it's, um, it's something that the books are there and um, we are, we are hopefully we'll be able to continue making these books. And um, uh, I'd like to say thank you to Simon for having, having me on today. And um, it's been Bra and Abdi Liston, thank you so much for, for tuning in. And maybe we'll catch up with you at some point 
once we, I'd love to see folk again once we can get back into scales and the libraries and everything. And uh, in the meantime, hopefully some of these wee poems that were read and, and the bits and pieces that were in some way a bit of compensation. But all the best and see you again at some point. That's for her. Me too. Cheers, everybody. Thank you. Cheers. Bye now. Thank you.